and welcome to the Deception Podcast, attempting to make an audio show out of a visual art form since 2013. My name is John Sparrow. Alongside me is Aaron Hayes. Howdy doody. And our guest host this week is Mr. Jordan Murphy. Howdy do. Oh. Uh, that's where you say hello. So, Jordan, if people don't know who you are, who are you? I am a hermit who works in a workshop creating close up pads and strange things for other magicians. So, this is uh, JM Authentics, is yes, your name? Yes, JM Authentics. Name. Yeah, get the, let's get the plugs out of the way now. Get the plugs, get the plugs. You know, plugs. you get a guest <laughs> on, like, be plugging. on a chat show, and they was like, So, you've got this new book? And they put it on like a weird angle on the table yeah. so the camera can see it properly. Yeah. Well, we're doing that, but in like an audio version. Oh, so I'll wait till the end to tell everyone about the discount then. So yeah, they yeah, yeah. We'll do a yeah, yeah, yeah. later on, but people will know you as the guy who makes the cool pads. This yeah. is it now. And they've been taken up by uh, Illusionist as well. You can get them on there, can't you? Um, yeah, and I've had some crazy clients like Blaine, Dynamo and... Jamie Raven recently, so it's been been quite good. It's been I saw quite Ravens, fun. It was pretty any cool. uh, any big names yeah. in the industry that you can <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't, you don't mind you mind dropping or whatever. I, I saw I saw the Dynamo ones. Oh, I didn't see Dynamo. I saw Ravens ones because it got he's got the little stick man coming out, which is quite cool. Yeah. Is that was that you or did they they come uh, to you just with the design? The, the artwork, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Then I made it a bit fancy. Fancy, <laughs> lovely. A bit fancy. Cool, then, wicked. That's um. Oh, I was going to carry on, on with a couple of little, just a little question. Yeah, go ahead, so, go ahead. What made you, Jordan, go? Do you know what? Close-up pads. That's where the money's at. This is Aaron now asking questions because he wants to get into the business. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what? Actually, <laughs> I I am aware that there's people who have uh, who have bought, probably who have bought one, and uh, and then gone ah. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna do these as well now. You're always gonna. It's, it's meant to, to be the highest form of flattery, though, isn't it? When you is start it, getting though? somebody ripped off, is it, it just makes you look like a prick? Anyone like doing it? It's just when they blatantly do something that I've literally just put out. That, that it's like anything in magic. You do something and someone's doing it the next day. But like, I've got no problem against anyone doing it. I mean, there's enough business for everyone. So it's what? All really? We know that. I, I'm so not kind. sure I'm meant to say anything, but I'm gonna because he's not here. But I know Jordan's having a bit of a grief at the minute with somebody oh. ribbing off the uh, lung testers. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, probably, I think that's different. Probably that's a little bit litigious. In the sense so. that he's built that up to be so popular. Yeah. And then things like that happen. That's that's quite heart, heart, heart wrenching. It quite is, fine. but I think uh, luckily they're such an arse to make. I reckon anyone who tries to knock them off will make three and go, oh, fuck this. It's not <laughs> too much work. <laughs> I'll go back to ripping DVDs. <laughs> it's much easier. Uh, all right, Wiki, let's do some news. Travelling the world of prestigitation and bringing back the interesting bits. This is Magic News. Prestidigitation. Yes. it's. And, I need to get you record that sometime because you say it wrong. Apparently. I know, yeah. I keep getting told. Like, you're still saying prestidigitation. I, I can't say it normally. I love how they say you're still saying it wrong. Sense. Like you do that live every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> as if it's just me, Aaron, you're ready for a bit. Get the banjo and the trumpet out. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, right, uh, slide to hand. <coughs> I'm going to be careful here because I don't want to be offensive. No, no, no. But it should, no, we're, we're just re sadly the the, uh, the the paper or the online article that we have um, is is the Mail Online. Yeah. And they're not known for their Ooh. for their clever or thoughtful journalism. Yeah, it is. It has been reported by the Mirror as well, but the, 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 there's more information on the Mail one, unfortunately. So we'll use that. Uh, it says here, slice of hand that doesn't need fingers. A teenager who lost his right leg and most of his fingers to meningitis as a toddler performs mind-blowing magic tricks. So we're talking about Dean here. Dean, I think it's Lahan or Le Lahan. I'm not 100% sure. I, I, think, it's, I think it's Lahan. Lahan, sure. yeah, that sounds no, all right. The topic of his surname has never come up in conversation. No, I suppose not, no. But uh, <laughs> Dean Lahan, that sounds right. Yeah, um, in fairness, it's not like people will say, do you know Dean? Dean who... You're not going go to gonna say yeah, to a surname, are you? To the, you know, to say who, who he is. This is um, this is a video <coughs> that was originally filmed by. It was he filmed by Sean Hayden. Yeah, Sean yeah. filmed okay, it. So yeah. Sean Hayden's filmed this at Lads Convention. He's robbed my hat, by the way. Just, uh, just totally off topic. Sean Hayden um, is has stolen my hat, and I want my hat back. I was Stop. wondering why your head looks so naked. Yeah. There's no, there's no gag there. That's his genuine. Like, genuinely, there's oh, right, a video okay. of him online now. With his, with was his this hat. like a public service announcement? <laughs> like a wanted, dead or alive, <laughs> my hat back off, Sean. <laughs> um, but this, so Sean's filmed this at Lads Convention. It wasn't one I was at. Jordan, you were there. Yeah. Um, How was it? I always. It's it's a convention. I spent most of the day in the bar. You know, as you do. As you should. But um, no, it was good. It's good it's probably Fun. that's probably closest one for you, isn't it? Your your Birmingham yeah. base. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a pretty local one. one. For me. Birmingham base. Was it? Um, I know that Morgan Striebler was meant to be there, but decided yeah. to retire from magic two days before or something. 
Yeah, he retired like a week before. Yeah, so just, they, just, but to be fair to them, they got a really good replacement, which was uh, Nick Lawrence. Oh, Nick right. Lawrence. Yeah. And the stuff that he was doing that was incredible in his lecture, and I really took away some good stuff from that. Oh, that's good then. So, yeah. That's so, good. So, Fox Reebler. <laughs> we don't need so it. That's a soundbite. <laughs> yeah, we'll have that. But anyway, so, yeah. Oh, I've just clicked a link. Sorry. There you uh, go. I've just given the Daily so, Mail 2p. So, uh, D- yeah, Dean, anyway, as uh, was filmed um, uh, by Sean performing some. Um, performing some magic, pretty much, uh, performing some close-up magic. And the video has gone a little bit viral. Um, well, went, viral enough, for, the viral enough to, of... to go on the, uh, on the Daily Mail yeah, website. Yeah, it, it went around the magic community pretty quick, didn't it, and, and got shared quite a lot with magicians. Um, I think mostly just like as a bit of an inspirational thing, really, you know, just sort of say, because we, in the shop especially, when I was working at the shop with you, I used to get a lot of people say, I can't do something because my hands are too small or, you know. It's yeah, you, just, that as well. you kind of want I to show them as my as my standpoint. If I'm struggling with learning something, I just think, hang on, Dean could do this. Yeah. I know he could do this. Yeah. So why can't I? And that's that's I use him as like you say as an inspiration to uh, keep practicing. I think and it's you... a lazy excuse to say <laughs> sometimes. I mean, <laughs> yes, with some moves or some slights, it, it, it hand size genuinely does come into it. Yeah. Um, but when people say, oh, I don't think I'll ever learn the pass because. Uh, my hands are just too small. It's absolute, absolute rubbish. Wait. I have tiny hands, and without bragging, but I would say that my pass is 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 pretty. Uh, it's pretty. Do you know what? In fact, actually, I'll I'll, put, I'll upload a video of my of my crotch area, yeah. just to my hands, with yeah. the uh, the title um, comments on my pass. Sh- comment for a like, like for a comment, like for a. Like, like, that's yeah, the other well. thing about Dean as well is he palms a card with his hand with his least fingers on. Yeah. So yeah. It's it's amazing, an incredible really, thing to see. And uh, see, so the thing is, with, excuse me, is that um, this obviously happened when he was young. Like I say, it's from meningitis. He was 18 months old. So he's, I can't, you, you've got to be careful really because sometimes you can give, I had to, to word this without sounding really horrible. You can give him too much sort of, oh, oh, aren't you brave? Isn't you know? he brave? Do yeah, you know what but... I mean? The guys live like this and the fact that he could do card tricks, the fact that he, he probably just, manages really well do you know what i mean this is this has been the guy's life do you know what i mean so he can i'm sure he can function perfectly well yeah i well, think it's amazing that that of all <coughs> things he's decided to go into magic well does he's... that make sense you know what i mean that's yeah. the thing he's chosen and i wonder whether it was a conscious decision that i'm not gonna like let this thing control me or if just he liked magic and just got into it you know i'd love to sit down and chat with him about it yeah he's a, he's a really uh modest young guy as well like yeah. on, on the back of what you're saying there there's there's things that we take for granted as moves like a like a pinky break yeah that for him would are an impossibility yeah yeah, yeah he's created his own moves to facilitate well, those things yes. and yeah. because of that they fall magicians because there's no way a magician, you're not other lucky magician for could it. do it yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, he says in his own words here uh, that he feels like he's come a long way. Uh, except at the start, he couldn't even pick up a pack of cards. Uh, obviously, he had to practice and practice and practice. Um, I, I do like the way that, I mean, it's it sounds ridiculous. And like you said, you don't want to be that person who's going, oh, what, look at that there. But there's a video of him there doing a riffle, riffle shuffle with a, yeah. a waterfall finish. Now, yeah. I know pros who struggle with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who... It, with, without it's uh, do you know what I think we're just so scared of being politically correct yeah but I mean you see people who do have all of their fingers yeah, who struggle, struggle who it, struggle yeah. with that type of thing but um uh, uh he's, you know he's, he's gone right he's gone really well from it it's uh it says that he oh I didn't realize he, uh, he's, he only has one leg yeah yeah uh, yeah it looks like he's got it looks like he's got a prosthetic in the pictures and stuff but uh I can't imagine that's causing him any I, don't, I don't know if you'd really. like me to say but he's um He's done some magical upgrades to that prosthetic leg. Oh, really? That are Can fantastic. he do a shit up Balducci because of that leg? <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> there, there are some things he can uh, he can do that are awesome. I don't want to reveal it because, like I said, they're no, personal cool. to him. But yeah, and especially like you say, it's, it's going to be stuff that full, you got to say it's going to be stuff that fully magicians because it's it's not the sort of stuff. Now, do you think so. do you think that this can um, this will help him in 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 a way with like work or? I mean, obviously, it's given him a bit more exposure. I imagine now that there will be, uh, Oops. without 
Will you stop clicking on sponsor links? That's four P. I've given to the to the day. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> right, then they're, they're not in your local area. Them yeah. girls. I know. I know that it says they are. Right, and they're well, not. They're not really alone right it's now. Like I can see the reflection in his glasses, and that's not the Daily Mail. <laughs> um, it's a, yeah, it is. It's just a new one that they use hub. <laughs> no, they use hub at the end. Um, uh, will he get? Do you think this will help him um, in regards to like looking for like work? I, mean, I, don't, know or... I don't know if he's prefer- performing as a working magician. I'm not sure. I he imagine. Is, yeah. I he's imagine he is now. Performing on, he's performing under the title of the fingerless magician. Oh yeah, here we go. Better known as the fingerless taking, magician. He was taking suggestions on Facebook, and I said he should go with hands-free magic. But you know, I was overlooked on that point. So <laughs> <laughs> no, good for him. Let's it's move on. Video. It's doing well. A lot of inspiration to magicians. Yeah, good on you, Dean. Good. Like I say, I've never met the man, uh, but from I've only heard, uh, I've only heard good things about him as a person, which is uh, which is good. So let's move on from one video that's gone down quite well to another video that is, is I don't know. As I say, tearing the community a little. I think. I think yeah. People are sitting on either side, and um, I, it's not really news. <laughs> not, really. not really news, but I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about a trick that's come out called pen or pencil. Right. Pen. Um, no, it's not. It doesn't pencil. Like that. Pencil. It doesn't, it, doesn't, pencil. It, it doesn't matter whichever one you choose. Whichever one you choose. Does it matter? Yeah. If I yeah. say pencil, does it? Does it mean okay, we're going to use the pen? Yeah. Is it like oh, that? No. It's not like mentalism and magic combined. <laughs> this is. Uh, we're getting onto that. Oh, John, I haven't done. <laughs> I haven't copied the stuff over. I can't find. Where's the pen or pencil? Oh, there we go. Michael Chatelaine. Chatelaine. His name is. I can't remember what the guy's name Chatter, was. Shit, chat, I don't know. And uh, this is the fact that's come out. It's been released by. Um, I don't think. Is it Michael or Mikhail? Uh, it might oh, be Mikhail, yeah. I'm not sure. I think, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Michael. It looks like I've always called him Michael, so if, like... if it's Mikhail, I'm in trouble. It looks like it's been produced by himself, uh, released by himself. So this is a uh, pen-pencil sort of transposition thing, basically. You, you hold a pen, you can make it a pencil, or you make a pencil, you can hold it a pen. Now, I don't want to talk about methods, because it's not really our place to, at the end of the day. It's a, you know, it's a magic trick, and it's not really how it's worked. But I'm pretty sure that anyone who's watching it even just sees a trailer of it, understands what the method is. Magic. Uh, yeah, it uses magic. But um, I think you understand the method is, and I wonder whether or not, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't own this trick. Um, unfortunately, Jordan O'Grady isn't here this week because he will own this trick. Of course he will, because, because he buys, a new trick. Because he buys every trick. So uh, we'll have to talk to him about it when he's got it. But have I... you noticed that, jo- the other Jordan? That whenever other, other, to... Is that my name now? Well, other, you have to be, Jordan, don't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Henceforth. Have you, know, have you not noticed that? If you ever like, listen to the show and we talk about like a, a new effect. And you and, absolutely rip on him for and, having And every... jo- Jordan will go, yeah, yeah, you're right. It just arrived this morning. Yeah, and it's you're always like, right what? by his desk. Literally, he's just, he's, it's always like he's just got <laughs> it with him. I don't think his wife listens to the podcast. Yeah, I well, know how much he spends on it. <laughs> yeah, at least. Yeah. Oh, just a as long as he keeps though. churning out them, pipe, them lung testers. Yeah, he'll do all right, won't he? But these, uh, yes, it's pen and pencil. I think it's it's relatively obvious what the method is, and I think I wonder whether or not that this method will fly or be able to work in a, uh, I hate the term, but a real world situation, because it seems the most angle prone trick I've ever seen release. I think, and I worry that I, I think <laughs> it would look great on a promo video. I think okay. it, I think it looks great bit of magic for a promo video, much like the other thing that's come out recently from Greg Wilson, the spinning deck. I think that would look great on a promo video. Yeah, it, do you know what, magicians? It will look great on a promo video. In fact, was it called Revolution? Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah it will look. Video. It will yeah. look amazing on a promo video. It doesn't look amazing when nine out of ten videos on my Facebook feed are you spinning a pack of cards on your finger. Just uh, here you go. You know look, there I'm I am. Dropping it a minute and going again and dropping. Oh, it a sorry, minute. sorry. I think I, think I can just imagine, I can just picture a promo video opening. The cr- it opens up the credits. You're just standing there like that, looking dead cool with a thing spinning on your finger and your you name know what? comes up. I will say for that uh, revolution though, I I go out quite a lot with uh, Mark Lavelle and he yeah. has it with him all the time. And he'll just be sat there when we're at a bar or something, just using it, playing around with it. And it'll only take one person to say, "How are you doing that?" And then he's into a full set. Yeah. It's one of those things that catches the eye. Just, yeah, I don't know, but then, I, but then I, I have visions back of seeing magicians standing in the corner of a restaurant with a fire wallet going, ooh, waiting for somebody to ask. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I, 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 Can we watch the video? Can I put the video on of pen or pencil? Okay. Just want to have I'm a I'm going to watch your reactions to this now. Yeah, yeah it's like watching two girls, one cup. You won't hear it. But, uh, oh, dear. It's been performed on it's performed on Dynamo. There we go. Turn that down a bit. So what I do like about it is I saw I can't remember who it was I saw oh Dave uh, Dave Loosley from Alakazam did a um, 
Are you alright there, Aaron? It yeah. looks like magic! Have you not seen this before? No, no! Oh my god! No, I've not seen his video right. of it. Just had a layman reaction there yeah. from Aaron Hayes. Uh, right, just so you know now. Just tenure. I think me and John T have brushed upon it before, but uh, John T and myself, and I would say Jordan O'Grady as well, we are probably the three best magicians to perform magic to. Oh, yeah, we go. If I go mentally, if I see. I, first time I saw this, I went. Because <laughs> we do, we make the. Oh! Yeah, yeah. But, um,. <laughs> I've not seen this video of it. I've seen other Davis people's... Davis did a nice thing where he did like a transposition with it. So we had, I think if he had two of them or he had a, an extra biro and an extra pen and did a, you know, which one's in the pocket, which one's in the hand and then they switch back and forth. That's probably and I, the best use for I it. I think that's probably the best. If you're going to use it in the real world, that's probably the best use for it. He's taking away from the fact that look at this clever thing I've got in my hand that changes, you know. So, but I do think you look looking for a promo video. And what, and what I wanted to talk about really is whether or not is that okay that something's made for video? Is it okay to release effects that probably work better from a static uh, viewpoint? Because we need we need promo trailers, you know, we need show reels. So is it okay to make material that works better for that than you know? Does every trick that's released has to work have to work in the real world? No, because no, it doesn't. No. There are too many subcultures in magic for the, everything to be working material. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I think with that pen and pencil is uh, when I first saw it, I really didn't like it. Right. And then after seeing, um, after, in fact, all I did was ask a friend, if I was to take a pencil, shake it, and it changed into a pen in front of your face, what mm. would you think of that? And he was just, it was, just the thought of it was yeah. enough for him yeah, to go yeah. crazy. And I said, you have, you'd have no idea how that would work at all. And he was like, no, no idea whatsoever. And I think it's massive magician's guilt in some sense that's stopping a lot of people from from liking that effect, but I think Dave Loosley's routine massively covers up the thing that you're using, yeah, yeah, and and justifies it. So I think, in that sense, like we were saying, it, it will be a working trick. And I think any trick, no matter how difficult, can be a working trick in the right environment. It's just one of those things in finding an environment where you can use something. I think that's it. I think we forget sometimes that. There are other working environments than going to ten tables at a wedding, aren't there? You know, and there are other there are other situations where, you know, material might work and or might not. You know, there are people who go out there and work sets where they sit and people join them. You know, yeah, uh, I am um, uh, reading you... that. I'll be honest. I I like that. I think I yeah I do. I think. I think almost um, like Jordan brushed upon then the the magician's guilt. I think it's also it might all um, could almost be a little bit of snobbery because it's well that's a bit rather simple. Well, so, uh, the same uh, contrast I can draw is have you ever used a copper silver? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just, true, a, it's just yeah. a bigger version. Yeah, basically. Have I, I, I just revealed that effect? Yeah. Well, maybe it's fine. <laughs> I think, like just you say, I, I don't think we're really telling anything when we say yeah. that. You know, yeah, magicians are looking at it and, say, and looking at it and thinking, "Well, it's you know, it's just a." Pattern, I, I I I like that. What I don't like, what I don't like, however, is and and I'll and I'll mention this. Um, I have seen online, obviously, different people performing the effect. Um, you know, here, there, and everywhere. And some pe I think it depends on whoever is performing the effect of how much they like it, because I've seen it where one person has performed the effect. It looks really good. Um, you know the, the you know the effect is what the what it is, and someone will go on there and berate them for doing it. They'll tell them how rubbish the effect is, how awful it's. Oh, it's awful! It's terrible! The effect is awful. And then somebody else goes to do it, who maybe they know a little better, uh, and um, and it's it's you know it's praised. Then I don't I don't like that. I think that then comes back to the whole magician mm. snobbery thing of so it's, oh, it's, oh, it's all right, my mate does it, but not you. I don't like it when you. Oh right, it, you're not it, saying that some magicians do stuff better because that's no, a no, 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 because of who that magician is. Yeah, I magician. think that happens sometimes. You'll show someone something, they go, <coughs> oh no, do you know what? No, company. I'm not, I'm not too keen on that. But then all of a sudden, somebody who who they know does it, and it goes, oh, it becomes, you know, it becomes a little bit. Mm. Uh, it, then it's all right for some reason. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. That's not, that's not nice. So it, it, I think things like that sometimes they can be misinterpreted. Like it can just be that one person's presentation is different. Yeah. Like a presentation can make a terrible trick into a miracle. Of course it can. Um, yeah. So it's it's one of those things where I don't, there there is some malicious intent in the magic community, but I don't think sometimes I think on Facebook because there's no grammar or context of what's been said, yeah. it can be one but of those things where it's very difficult to. to get wording across yeah yeah so one version i did say i forget the guy's name there but he put it on one of these magic groups and he just sort of wrote 
pen and pencil on a piece of paper and held the paper up, but then did the change while the while the sort of viewpoint was on the paper. Yeah, that's what on the promo video. Oh, is it? Oh, I missed that. Just watched right, it. So rather than rather than sort of going, look, a pen changing, <laughs> he just holds the pencil and then and then the eye line comes away and then when you look back again, it's changed. I think that was quite nice. I think um, Tom Crosby has something that quite a lot like that that catches a lot of magicians off guard, where he has um, he writes something on a piece of paper. Do you want to have a cough? Do you want a cough? Yeah, I need to have a drink. Go on, do that. It's fine because... I think you write something on a piece of paper, turns it around to show you, and by the time you've read where's the pen gone, the pen's vanished. Yeah, yeah, that's on the... I think that's on Pencyclopedia, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Uses a young gimmicked pen as well. He uses a really... He does a really nice thing on Pencyclopedia. I know that we spoke about it before. Yeah. Uh, But he does a trick where he says, I'm going to use a pen and a coin, and he has a pen which he's spinning in his hand. And I use this now. Uh, where I say we'll do something with a pen and a coin um, and you say I have a pen here and you reach into your pocket to pull out a coin Yeah. Uh, but you pull out a pen Oh yeah. Of, and, and your hand the where, the, where the pen was is now a coin yeah. um, and it's, it's such a really nice thing because you don't have to draw attention to it at all you know, you know what we've just done there what? we've just said we really like Dave Lucy's presentation for pen and pencil and then we found an effect that is the same presentation but better the same thing yeah but, <laughs> but more more Clean, uh, stick props yeah. to have a coin and a pen. Yeah, a good, a good magical thinker is Tom Crosby. Oh, and a happy birthday to him as well. It's his birthday yeah. today. Uh, well, is it when, when does this go out? Well, yeah, no, I'll get it today, hopefully. Yeah, but if not, it was as reco- at the time of recording, it was Tom Crosby's birthday. Uh, all right, cool, let's do our masturbate. So, to McFly Day. Mm. The I like, Mc, I like McFly. It is. We're going to go and watch it, aren't we, when we finish recording McFly. We're gonna, no, we've, got no, their, we've got their live on tour, McBusted, yeah, special edition. Can't wait. Uh, we asked you then, is magic... That's not a sentence. Can no. magic <laughs> and mentalism mix? During a magic sec, does a... Me- oh, oh right. Words. Okay. Magic what? Right. Just have a, just have a word for yourself. Again. Yeah, please do. Can magic and mentalism mix? During a magic sec, does a mentalism piece just come across as, that's a clever box, pad or envelope? Do you work both? Can you keep them separate, or do you keep them separate? Can you perform magic at the same gig as mentalism? And if so, what do you have to consider? Mm. Now, I didn't think we'd get many replies on this, to be honest, because this it's a bit more of a cerebral question. And sometimes we find that we get more comments when we ask something like, name your favourite trick, or tell us something what funny What colour sponge do you use? Yeah, but sometimes when we ask when we something a little bit deeper... We get less replies, and we have had less replies, but eat, all of the replies have been quite in depth, actually. So, uh, now the first reply was actually from Jordan, but seeing as he's on the show, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I don't want him to look at the show notes. I want to see if he answers uh, what he actually wrote on his reply. If one, see if it's okay. the same one. <laughs> like, a... like I'm not reading it now, yeah. right in front of me on Facebook. <laughs> so, um, let's have a look. Phil Taylor said, um, "You can keep, perfo- you can perform both." <gasps> But close-up magic, doing it... Oh, I can't speak today. Right, read mate. that, read okay. that. <clears throat> I'm going to go and blow my nose. I think that's what I need to Is do. that what it is? Yeah, that's affecting your reading. Yeah. Uh, Phil Taylor says, uh, yes, you can perform both. Uh, but blow cl- my nose. I'm back in a minute. Uh, but close-up fun magic, uh, doing it together with mentalism, does take, the, uh, does take it away from the effect... Does take away from the effectiveness of mentalism somewhat. Uh, it just it just becomes a magic trick, I feel. Uh, having said that, I did do a simple drawing duplication and a gig with a few card tricks, uh, and the drawing duplication was the uh, the one that I got asked about the next time I saw them a couple of months later. At the end of the day, it's up to your personal style and what you feel works best at, in that moment. A question I would like to ask, though, is if you do combine both magic and mentalism, don't start asking questions for... This is our job. <laughs> Go on. Uh, but I'll let you. We will let you. <laughs> if you do combine both magic and mentalism and find the mentalism the stronger, do you then slowly make the transition to become a pure mentalist uh, because of that fact. Most mentalists uh, have had a good grounding in close-up magic and uh, and have had the, have made the uh, the, the segue nice uh, naturally. Uh, considering uh, my word, consider nothing other than having fun with your magic, whatever you're doing, and enjoy that moment, uh, be it with magic or mentalism. Can I ask a favour? You know, on these show notes, can you make the font a little bit bigger? It is a bit small, isn't it? I yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sc- I haven't got my glasses with me. So, Not that I wear them because I'm still young. It's an interesting everything. point there. I think you're probably right in your in your estimation that a lot of mentalisms, mentalists sorry, started, um, <laughs> started out in as, magic. as close as magicians. a gateway. But I think, it, I think it's purely that. I think it's a gateway. It's a lot easier to pick up a pack of cards and a little book that says magic tricks than picking up one that says, you know, 
mentalist routines or whatever. Uh, Dan Berger says, they're the same thing in my humble opinion. If you say think of any time during your set, then it becomes mentalism. Lay Ooh. folk don't give a shit. I wouldn't know Ooh. the difference. I don't know if I agree with this. As soon as you get a deck of cards out, people say, oh, you're like Darren Brown. Um, but I digress. That's Then there's the whole magic, mental magic or mentalism uh, BS as well. So bitter, Dan. Oh, he is a very bitter man. Yeah, he is. But a lovely we, man. We always like his his bitterness on the show. Uh, what do you know? Are you not you're not happy with that, are you, Jordan? Um, I don't agree that uh, as, as, you, as soon as you get a deck of cards out, people say you oh, you like Darren Brown. If you if you say to anyone, think of anything, then you do mentalism. Well, you're not really, are you? It's that's well, completely that's, different. Me that's, that's like mental saying that, magic, then surely, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. it's more mental magic. I mean, so like, what's the difference? Well, Craig Browning's actually summed it up <coughs> really nicely. Okay, go on then. Um, let's see if I can find a good excerpt from this. So you can feature mental magic as part of a magic show, but true mentalism, in order to gain optimum effect, must be kept separate because of the psychology that contrasts between the two. People come to see a magician knowing he's doing tricks, not so when it comes to a mind reader. Well, but that's only if you're playing mind reading as a paranormal mm. um, effect. Whereas, you, like, for instance, your example was Darren Brown, and he's been mentioned a couple yeah. of times. He tells you it's tricks, even though it's mind Well, reading. yes, but well, Craig Brown does go on, though, and say whether you claim some kind of analytic ex explanation uh, to what you're doing or if you go down the psychic route, uh, you've still got to invoke the belief and believability. That's what makes mentalism work. Uh, an investment of belief from your patrons, which is not the case with magic, which I is true that. I still think there's a third option, though. I there's don't the know. the analytical explanation, there is the psychic, Balloon modeling. psychic one. Oh. <laughs> I still Ding dong. Think, I still think there's a third option that is... It just looks like mind reading, but it isn't. No, I don't think. I don't think the, the lay people th think like that. I think they go, "Oh, it's magic." Yeah, but it's all tricks, though, and it? it is just tricks, isn't yeah. it? And when, when you come across go, a real mind reader, like a, a real mind reader, yeah. that then they're like, "Oh, this guy actually read my mind. It's yeah, no yeah. longer tricks." Like, yeah, no, you... no, um, Luke Jamay, Anyone who goes to want to see see one of his shows leaves there genuinely believing that he can read their minds. Now, does he and play, that's how it goes on stage. Does he play as he's a mind reader or that he's uh, he using NLP? He did do in his previous and... show. Yeah. He did do in his previous show. And he did a lecture at um, the first Moffat convention all about how if you are a mind reader, then you should be a mind reader. All of your effects should support yeah. that that is your ability. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing any future reading or anything like that. That should be your it's focus just my, to make it as believable what as possible. thinking now I can bring out. And I, I think that's the big thing with mentalism is it, you've got to make it as believable as possible to bring people into that world because it's, whereas with magic, it's, it is something a bit more fun. Yeah. Whereas it, it, it doesn't need that believability. Isn't it weird that, do you know the difference I think between mentalism and, and magic is? Go on. Is that if you pull out a, a dice with colored, just like colored sides on it. Yeah. Uh, at a tape, you know, when you were doing walk around magic, then they'll go, ah, oh, that's a nice little tricky thing, isn't it? Yeah. But for some reason, it's all right for a mentalist to stand on stage with a dice, yeah. with a couple of dice, and go, roll it. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is that if yellow, it's the it's the it's the phraseing it's of the it all. The demeanor and the yeah, framing. Yeah, yeah, the framing. Roll of the it. dice for me. I think <laughs> definitely if you're playing it, especially that's green. I think it's green. Is it green? If you're playing it as a straight <laughs> mentalist, as in, you know, you sit there and you do some sex, and then you finish off and say. Oh, and I can also read minds. As a spectre, I say, well, what the fuck are you doing with these red balls for then? Yeah, it, if you and can as read well, minds. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you were just doing a gambling demonstration, showing all these amazing skills, and then go, oh, I can read minds. So well, why the hell so, do you need to yeah, know how to do all exactly, that? If yeah. you can just read the hands of the exactly. poker players opposite you, it doesn't make yes, sense. Exactly. But so, then I think if you're playing it as a, you know, I'm going to use some techniques to make it look like I'm reading your mind. That that can still work with magic, I think. Mm. Uh, and I think with, with mentalism as well, there's sometimes this need to make everything has to uh, fall into the same kind of category. I've I've helped someone before with a, a mentalism release where they they did um, predetermined activities trying to make the spectator showing the, spe the spectator they could make them do certain things. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of there, they did mind reading. So. Why would you need to do mind reading if you can make you people can think what you want them to think? And why would you need to make people think what you want them to think if you can read their mind? Yeah, it was exactly, one of those. Yeah. There's a lot more in depth and making sure everything's purposeful. I think it's your thoughts and then what you say have to be purposeful with mentalism, whereas your actions and justifying your movements have to be purposeful with magic, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, do you want, should I read Jack Brister? Yeah. See, He's... I know Jack Brister does both. <clears throat> yeah. Um, now, do you want me to do it in. Did I hear myself again then? It might have just come through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, should I do it? Jack Brister has commented on my uh, excellent impression. 
I think he said that of you him. have to do it in his in the impression from now on. Whenever you talk about oh, whenever you say anything, okay, I've not heard this impression. This should okay, be good. It's just it's just generic posh bloke. Here we go then. <laughs> but go on. Yes, I do on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> However, no, no, he says. Uh, <laughs> Uh, John Preston says, uh, yes, I do on a regular basis. However, having said that, the main reason I think I can get away with it is because I don't present my magic as magic. I've blended a skill and sleight of hand. Uh, so the audience just assume my mental routines are just an extension of that skill. Uh, open bracket, i.e. reading micro-expressions slash body language, uh, comma, voice, intonation, etc. What, what? Uh, this also allows mentality. Uh, mentality? That's the wrong word. This also allows... I'm going to just do a normal voice now. Uh, this also also allows for mentally flavoured magic to play much stronger uh, because they assume it is a combination of both skills. So I think they can mix, but it needs to fit your style of performance if you plan on pulling it successfully. Now, remember we said before about some magicians, um, they walk around and they, you know, they say, hey guys, how you doing? Whatever. Jack Brister, I, uh, and I've only met him, like, I've only really spent time with him once at the Deception Convention. Um, and he comes across the type of magician who I imagine gets booked a lot to just sit at a table. Mm. and people come and see him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like a modern-day parlour magician, you know, like a, a salon, even, you know, that, that type of thing? Yeah. So I think it possibly... Uh, uh, I haven't made me, me mind up on this yet. I uh, think with that, though, when people come to see you, you get to set the atmosphere, whereas yeah, when you, you're going you to choose, tables... Yeah. I think it's, I think it's all about, that, it's what it's all about is atmosphere and framing, and you as a person. I, I can't get away with mind reading. No, I me don't, neither. I can't do it, because one... I, I can't. I don't. Come I, a, I try. <laughs> I hate the whole. I don't like the presentation that it's real. I don't you know, at all because I think it's only one step away from being a psychic. So I'm not. I don't particularly like the presentation of I'm actually reading your mind, and I don't. All my other material doesn't lend itself to then go on to doing the whole NLP style presentation of it either. So I don't do any mind reading for that reason because my my personal performance. If it doesn't agree with you, it'll yeah, come across, exactly, and you don't yeah, want it just that. Doesn't yeah. fit at all. Uh, so a few other comments then. Paul Wingham says, I think it depends on how you present your mentalism. If you do, say, an ambitious card routine, then an omni deck, and then a paddle, it seems pretty implausible to then go on after doing things that are blatant tricks to claim that you're also an expert on body language and suggestion. I think people will assume that you've just shown them another trick, whereas people do genuinely believe a lot of nonsense explanation mentalists give, to the point where mentalists have asked, where do I learn the NLP that Darren uses? So yeah, I think it can go together with your character. It needs to be believable for both magic and mind reading. Personally, I pretty much only do mentalism now. Uh, yeah, I think that's the kind of thing that mm. we're settling on, isn't it, really? That it yeah. works, but only if the two areas have a similar kind of background, I think. Adrian I mean, Lawrence. Oh, sorry, go, <clears throat> go on, Jordan. I was say, a person who like lives and breathes their act and their persona is uh, Pete Turner. You'll never, yeah. you'll never have him break character. No. Anyone who says, "Can you read my mind? Can you do this? Can you?" He's able to do it straight away, and I think that's his voice changes a bit. His yeah. voice changes. I've noticed when he's performing. He's like, <laughs> "Hey, uh, so what he said, think of a think of a card. <laughs> well, think think of a word. You've got a date of birth in mind. And you're like, you're like, Pete, am I right? I tell you, I'm proper Bradford, than me. <laughs> proper, proper, proper Yorkshire. Lad. Yeah, but I do that when I'm." Recording anything? I, yeah, that's I true. Hey, you, you try and get a you try and get a media voice. That's right. Um, I, Adrian <laughs> Lawrence says I perform both in the same gig and not in the same set though. Um, to me, when you mix mentalism with other forms of magic, you get mental magic. I think it depends on what area of mentalism you are using. I wouldn't mix a uh, living uh, living dead routine with a close up cabaret magic. Uh, oh, sorry, with close up cabaret magic uh, or cabaret magic even. But at a close up gig, I will have some ESP cards and a pendulum in my bag. For some spectator, uh, as, as mind reader bits, um, I do have a pure mentalism act as well, uh, and I wouldn't mix it. Uh, I wouldn't mix a bit of close-up sleight of hand related magic uh, with that. Mainly as a st uh, what? Mainly as a style thing because it doesn't fit the mood. Others may be able to. I think it just depends on your performing personality. Um, yeah. Apologies, yeah. Adrian, for Aaron completely messing up what you I'm said. So, I'm so sorry, Adrian. I understand what you mean. Uh, me Again, it's, it's all away, coming yeah. down to the same point, isn't it? If you per if you perform, I've done persona, gigs though where I've turned up somewhere and you know you're in like a there's like a few magicians have been booked. You don't know who the others are until you get there, um, and you're you're loading up your pockets, <laughs> you know you're doing all the things, and uh, the person next to you is uh, the person next to you is getting a, uh, you know he's uh, stacking a deck, um, he's just wet his sponge balls 
Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? He's getting all his set ready. He's got his rope in one pocket. He's loading his... He's uh, getting his... Uh, yeah. Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, table. no, you know what I mean? I mean, he's, you know, he's got, he's got his sponges ready or whatever. He's got a de uh, deck of cards there, a duplicate, you know, a red one on the bottom of a blue deck or something. Um, and then they'll take out like a pendulum or a crystal ball, you know, like a ball or something. I'm like, how are you going to... And it always amazed me thinking... I... The only time where that would mix in is if, like, after they've done all of the set for the table and someone comes over and wants to see some at the end and you do something that's a bit more personal and meaningful for that one person. Yeah. We... And I think in that sense, you can get away with saying, this is who I really am, but this is how I make my money. Like, I sort of downplay my abilities or whatever hmm. to... Yeah, we um, we done a uh, an evening once uh, where we... <laughs> Sorry, that's Stop funny. That. Stop watching videos then. Um, we done a, a gig once where we were on the uh, we were like on the bill uh, with uh, those two other acts. Uh, now one of them was a, was pure mentalism, mind reading, crystals, uh, pendulum swinging. You know that wasn't it? Yeah. Do you remember? Then the next guy came on and done like a, a card location uh, and white star. So that was kind of like. Mm. Weird, and then we went on and done like, comedy magic. Yeah, um, and I think the two that went down the better, I would say, was were us because we stuck to comedy magic, and the guy who done the, you know, think about a word, think mm. think, of, think of the word, think of the area in you, think of this, think of this, think of this. Um, I I don't know if these are all like our own thoughts now. This is like the Jerry Springer part of the show, you know, where you just like, <laughs> look at the camera and like, see, your, see your own in bits. A um, uh, I don't. I I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. Personally, I I don't because some people will then say, "Well, what is the invisible deck?" What you know what I mean? <sighs> really, you're not you're not just saying, "Oh, and look, look, the card you picked. It's also upside down in this pack." It, I, or I will are you contrast saying, what think you've of a just card. said there, saying that the invisible deck is mentalism. It's like saying YouTube magic is still the art of magic. Yeah. The invisible deck is to mentalism as YouTube magic is to I, the art. I magic. think it's, uh, it's, it's mentalism light. Yeah, <laughs> mentalism light. I like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's like the free version of Angry Birds you used to get, and you get like a little bit of mentalism. And they go, "Can you do any more mind reading?" And you go, "Can, but I've got to pay like seventy nine p for the full app now. Yeah. Otherwise, no, I can't." I can, but I've got to quickly go and turn another card over. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, like I say I, I don't know. For me. I've tried doing a few little drawing duplications and, uh, and and things along them lines. And personally, it doesn't. It just doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't. That's fine, though. It doesn't work for me. So I tend to uh, I tend to to not to not bother with it. Um, it's just not my. It's just like I say. It's just not for uh, for my personality, really. Um, John T. Thoughts on it? Are they mutually exclusive, or are, you know? I think are I've they... already said really well. I think I, I think it's if you put if you're performing personalities is there you can work them both. But I think you have to be very, I think you have to be more selective with your material so that they yeah. both complement each other. I think that's fine to say. Um, all right, good. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Anyway, that was a good talk. Um, <laughs> plug, plug, plugs. What we're we working on. Uh, Jordan, have you got a plug for us? I can I can do you one better than a plug if you want. Anyone yeah. who's listening to this, I can give them a, a discount on any pads on jmauthentics.com. Wow, does, does that sound good? That sounds fantastic. Would they have so to put in to a do? little word or? Yeah, so when they get to the checkout, if they put in deception in capitals, they'll get 20% off any orders. Fantastic. And if they want a custom pad, of course, they can just me message me and use the same code and I'll apply that. All right, we can. So the custom pads, they go, they just email you. There's, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a little section on the site that says custom pads. And so. that site again is? Uh, jmauthentics.com. Please don't put www. though, because for some reason the server's not lining up at the moment, so it's just jmauthentics.com. That's cool. Uh, and where can they find you, Jordan, on, uh, on the social medias if they want to? Oh, I'm on Instagram at, at JMAuthentics, Twitter at JMAuthentics, and you can always pop me a message on Facebook. I'm a, I'm a sociable guy. Good stuff. When he's awake. Aaron, you got anything you're working on? Anything <laughs> um, interesting? Do you know what? No, mate, I was going to just say, yeah. uh, just like to say a, a big thank you uh, to, um, to, I've just come back from Bristol. Oh, yeah, so oh, a big, God, yeah, a big sorry, thank you. I was going to talk about that. Oh, no, it's fine. Sorry. A big thank you to, uh, to Mark Bennett for, uh, for having me and... Uh, being my support act the first night. Mm -hmm. Big thank you to Richard Newman for being yeah. my support act on the right. second right. night that I was there. Do you know what? 
uh, how that man does not get is not like around the literally going from one one town to the next because he is it's it's so funny he's such a good act um almost he, he almost made me feel like the second act almost um uh, i'm joking uh to the um and then it was at illusions bar as well so a big thank you to the close-up guys who were there there's mark hay mark long as well and uh, liam divine turned up as well for one night he's uh i think his partner lives in bristol she goes to the uni university I think there. It's mine and Liam's three year Facebook anniversary today. Oh, is it? Oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. And I didn't get him anything either. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure you've got enough of it. Well, you've, you've mentioned him on the fourth largest magicians podcast oh, in the go. country. Yeah. So there you go. There's in a nice the country. <laughs> in the world, I guess. Yeah. Are them, the are, them, are them lads still doing it in America? It doesn't matter. They still have more listeners than we do. Right, Look, well, yeah. <laughs> we got time for. Uh, I'm going to have a little plug for our other podcast on the on the uh, Geekism Network, uh, which is Geekism Weekly, uh, which we're recording later today, actually. And it's all there. It's sort of a geeky show. It's all about comics and games and tech and things like that. You can find more information at geekism-network.com. Uh, that's really it. We're going to go and watch Back to the Future too. Yes, we are. All right, guys. Thanks very much. And, uh, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. This show is part of the Geekism Network. For more information on this and other shows, visit geekism-network.com.